Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Unscripted Faith. We are so glad you've let us into your home by way of your uh, social media tablet, whatever the way that you're watching us. We are so glad to have you today. And I'm Jay Anthony Gilbert alongside Angela Madden. Listen, I am so excited to get into today because there's going to be some good topics we're going to get into. Yes, I mean, we're living in some truly distressing and confusing times, Jay. And today we're going to get to talk about how do we actually navigate those moments with joy, with abundance, with goodness, instead of getting lost in the sauce. That's right, you know, and there's a, uh, a, a there's, she's not a stranger no. to Cornerstone, and it's going to be great uh, just, just discussing how to navigate all the things. There's so many divisive things that are happening yes. in society today. I mean, we got the election that's coming up. Yes. I mean, we've seen the recent attempt again on President Trump, yes. and it, I mean, who knows what else is going to come down the pike. So it's going to yes. be great to have some wisdom shared with us on how we can navigate these times. For sure, with all the noise in our heads, we need to know how to navigate it. And Carol McLeod is a best-selling author, popular speaker who loves to teach the Word of God with joy and enthusiasm. Her heart is really to encourage and empower women through passionate and practical biblical messages. And she joins us now and she's gonna share with us how we can overcome negativity, uncertainty, and live with purpose and intention. Carol. Welcome to Unscripted Faith. Oh, I'm so excited to be with you both today. Thanks for having me. It's been a while. Yes, we're glad to have you today. Thanks. <laughs> Well, listen, we're real excited to get right into this, and we've got two segments with you. And uh, yeah. the first want to start off with this. Uh, what are some of the things, I mean, we're living in a culture that is so divided more and more. Yeah. Tensions are higher now than ever. Uh, what are some of the things you're seeing in society that gives the word mm -hmm. brokenness uh, real meaning in our society? Oh, Jay, you only, you only have to watch TV for about three minutes before yeah. you realize how broken this world is. You know, there's the racial divide, which breaks my heart. Yeah. There's a gender confusion. There's politics. Um, there are so many things that are thrown at us day after day after day. And we think, God, where are you? What What is, what is my purpose in this very broken world? And then the church, the church of Jesus Christ has yeah. begun to believe something. Some lies they're not going to the word of god yeah. for eternal truth so 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 much about our world is broken and jay i just see so many of my friends so many women i know wrestling saying mm. now how do i respond to this very unsafe world well yeah. it's a great question because how do we respond let's yeah. take a look at something like the racial divide I mean, right. me being mixed, black and white, I tell people all the time, uh, I'm, I can't be, I, how am I gonna be prejudiced because I got both running through my veins. So, but you know, I got, I'm I in the middle you, of both worlds. Uh, but the reality <laughs> is though, is that there's a major divide. We see this stuff yeah. with the, the police. Uh, yeah. We just saw the yeah. things that have happened on the news with different individuals. Yeah. How do we respond? What, what exactly do we do concerning race? Yeah, so Jay, either the Bible holds all truth or it doesn't. So Come even on. in a situation like the racial divide, we have to make sure that we're centered on what scripture says. Um, Jay, several years ago when there'd been another brutal killing and, and the racial divide, the chasm had grown unthinkably large, I thought, Jesus, what can I do? I, I'm not the pastor of a mega church. I, I don't sit in the halls of Congress. My address is not 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Like what can an ordinary woman yeah. who loves you do to change yes. this situation? Um, and I remembered Jay, that when I was entering my freshman year in high school, the Holy Spirit's so good. He reminds you yes, he of does. lessons you've learned in life. And I was starting my freshman year in high school and my mom sat me down the day before school started. And I thought, oh no, we're gonna have the talk, you know? <laughs> um, but she said, Carol, I just wanted to tell you, you are not gonna be the prettiest girl in the freshman class. And I thought, yep, I know that. And she said, you will not be the most musical girl. I, I thought, what? I, I thought oh, wow. that's what I did well. And she said, you will not be the most popular girl the smartest girl or the most athletic girl in the freshman class. And she said, but what you can be is the kindest girl in the mm. freshman class. 
And you know, kindness leaves our legacy. We're deciding today what kind of legacy we will leave in the future. And human kindness is what God calls all of us to. So on that day, four or five years ago, when I thought, what can I do to help to, to make the, that chasm smaller, the racial chasm, the Holy Spirit said, Carol, just be kind. Be, but don't just be kind, be intentionally kind. Mm -hmm. So Jay, now I look. I chase down opportunities to find somebody whose skin is a little bit different color than mine, doesn't matter, lighter, darker, whatever, yellower, redder, blacker, I don't care. But to go after these people who are just like me on the inside, just like me, have, have the same needs, wants, desires, and to just be kind to them, to just stir up a conversation, to tell a young mom she's doing a good job, to, to help an elderly woman with her groceries. That's what we all can do. Now, Carol, I have to ask you, because some of these moments can get a little bit heated, you know, with the election coming up oh, and yeah. everybody's uh, got their opinion. Oh, and God. honey, they are right all the way right uh, all the time. OK, so yeah, like yeah. being kind, we love this idea. But in those moments when you feel your blood pressure rising and you want to scream, what do you personally do to bring that thought of kindness back into the moment and make it an action? I think, first of all, you keep your voice level down. I think, secondly, you don't call names. You don't um, condemn. You don't accuse. But it's okay to just say something like, hey, you know, I just don't think we're going to agree about this. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. Let's talk about something we can agree about. I think just keeping your voice level down. You know, I, Angela, on social media, I just don't even go there. I, yeah. I don't even Wisdom. go there because yeah. I'm not going to change one person's mind by what I say on social media. Not one. Come on, that's wisdom right there, honey. I think we could turn down a whole lot of noise if we use that bit of wisdom. Yeah. So true. Go ahead. But you know, we're y'all, we're not alone. Like the Holy Spirit has invited every generation to live abundantly in a broken culture. We are not the first generation, nor will we be the last, who lives at a time in history when when politics are compromised, when the media lies, when everything around us seems to be lies. We're not the first. So why do we think that? Yeah. Um, and so what we do is we live with the fruits of the Spirit. What we do is we stay faithful to the cause of Christ. That's what we do. Yes, that is so good. You know, Carol, I am excited to dive more into this conversation because I feel like the wisdom that you have is so practical and applicable mm -hmm. in this hour. And it really is what will change the tides for the bride and bring others into the kingdom. So I'm excited. Yes. We're going we're gonna to have more conversation with Carol and learn not only just how to survive in this moment of history, but how to overflow with his goodness. But first, let's check out this segment with Trending Now with Anna. Tara Johnson's God Story made the news when HGTV stars Aaron and Ben Napier stopped by her newly renovated home in Orlando, Florida. The home was once the set for the 1991 movie My Girl, but today it is Hope House, a maternity home for women. Executive director and founder of Hope House, Tara Johnson, shared, Almost 12 years ago, I sat on the bathroom floor staring at a positive pregnancy test scared to death and certain I had ruined my entire life. Friday, I opened the doors to a maternity home. God can redeem it all, take even the most shameful parts of your life and use it all for His glory. Moms who live at Hope House will stay for 12 months while they're pregnant and go through a program that focuses on mental health, financial literacy, career and job readiness, relationship skills, home economics, baby care, and parenting. To learn more about Hope House, visit them on Instagram. I'm Anna Schmidt, and this is Trending Now. Wow, you know, there's so many stories like Tara's that I'm familiar with. You know, my wife, Pastor Tiffany, and I, uh, we opened up our Prices Pregnancy Center not too long ago. And I want to weigh in with Miss Carol here on the subject of abortion. We're talking about a broken culture. 
Um, I mean, man, it, this here, my wife and I, we've come up against um, death threats. We've had our, our center vandalized. Um, we've had to up our security. All of that because of a difference of opinion. I have a question for you. We are going to have differing opinions. How, as Christians, can we state our opinion, what we believe is truth, but still walk in love and allow people to make their own choice? Because after all, that's what God's going to do anyways. He's going to allow us to make our own decisions. Mm -hmm. Well, he really is. I love that story about Tara Johnson and, and House of Hope. You know, one of my sayings in life, Jay, is don't waste your pain, uh, but use it as a springboard, as a platform for ministry. And that's certainly what Tara has done at at Hope House, using her pain as a platform to minister to others. But truly, Jay, abortion is one of the most heartbreaking yeah, um, realities of our day. Um, I don't get angry about much, Jay. I'm a very tempered person, very, very stable. But now when you're talking about killing babies, th this girl's going to speak up. Yeah. Th Amen. This girl has something Amen. to say. Mm -hmm. There, when we shed the innocent blood of children, there is such a deep evil there. You know, our, our culture does not value human life. And it, it started with babies in the womb. And, and now we see it in other areas as well. But again, talking to people, not in an accusatory t tone, yep. but what I've learned, Jay, is maybe to ask questions. Well, when do you, when do you believe that life starts? Amen oh, that. oh, you believe when, when their heart beats? Well, did you know their heart beats at, at about seven weeks? Did you know that? But, but to ask, ask questions just to make sure they know they're dealing in truth. And, and for me, rather than get upset with people who are pro-abortion, what I've tried to do, Jay, is what you and your wife have tried to do, to minister to women who find themselves pregnant and nowhere to go, to, to be a voice of love and hope. I think one of the greatest things we can do is to teach the next generation to yeah. treasure life, yeah. that babies yeah. are not an yeah. inconvenience. That's right. Babies babies are not a curse. Babies are a blessing. Mm -hmm. Babies are God's opinion that the world should go on. Mm -hmm. And listen, I want to join with God and, mm -hmm. and, and join with him and help this next generation of women embrace the little ones they've been given. Yeah. That's so good, Carol. You know, and one of the things that we've realized too, I think it's so important that the church gets educated and people yes. get educated because a lot of times it's the same old thing when it comes to life. You know, it's like abortion is murder and uh, they say my body, my choice. And it's just a bickering back and forth versus when you break it down, if you understand the truth and mm -hmm. get educated, it's amazing how, I went to a senator, just real quickly, I went to a senator and I asked him, I said, when do you think life begins? And the senator said, had all, their, had all of her constituents, and if I mentioned her name, you know who it was. And she said, well, I really can't give you an answer to that. But like, we're so busy arguing mm -hmm. that we don't really get to the crux of really what's going on. But I want to ask you a question, though, because yeah. you, you're listening to all this, and we got all this bickering going on, we've got all this hate, we've got all this violence, we've got all these things happening. What do you tell people? How do I overflow in a time where it's easy to get depressed, discouraged, or maybe even fearful because there's just so much of this vitriol going around in the world? Yeah, you know, Jay, Paul wrote the book of Colossians to a very broken church who was trying to survive in a very broken culture. And one of his words of advice to them was have hearts that are overflowing with gratitude. And for me, Jay, so often I have been tempted to only focus on the negative things in this world, to talk about what's wrong. But but Paul comes around it from a different corner. And he said, let's start to talk about the things that you can be grateful for. Listen, we serve a Lord who's still on the throne. He has not relinquished his power to anyone. No matter who wins this election coming up, Jay Come and on. Angela, right. Jesus is still Amen. going to be Lord of all. And my eyes are going to be on him. I'm going to faithfully serve the cause of Jesus Christ. My life will overflow with the joy of his presence. And listen, y'all, this is not rocket science. If I can do it, anybody Amen. can do it. Well, um, theologians say that Colossians is the most Christ-centered book in the Bible, and we have to center our lives on Jesus Christ. We've got to keep our eyes on him no matter what's going on in our world. 
That's right. This isn't new, right? Like Paul addressed right. these same issues back in his day. Now you had a personal experience in our last moment here. Would you share with us that moment you had that said, hey, I've got to shift my eyes towards gratitude and away from what I'm meditating on? Yeah, Angela, so I was watching the news one night, um, just thought I'd tune in and see what was happening in the world around us. And I was aghast. I was so disturbed. I thought, you've got to be kidding me. This is the reality of the world that I live in. Nobody knows who they are. It's Angela, it's like the emperor's new clothes. Nobody's willing to stand up and say, yeah, that, that's not true. <laughs> and and I was so disturbed that night. I could barely sleep. I, I, I prayed. I cried out to God. And the very next morning, I began reading the book of Colossians. Wow. And I realized that every generation, as I said before, has been invited to live abundantly at a broken time in history. Listen, Angela, we are God's answer to the pain in the world. We have the mind of Christ. We're supposed to be his hands and his feet. We take the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which is the personality of Jesus, to the world that we live in. So we should not be distressed, but we should know that we are a pointed to live wholeheartedly for Christ. You know, I think about that um, phrase, saying that phrase that the army has, we're looking for a few good men. Yeah. Well, Jesus is looking for a few good men, a few good women who will live for him regardless of the deceit of the culture. And I am in, I am all the way in. Amen, we believe that we're in as well with you. Tell us real quickly how we can get our hands on overflowing. Yeah, it's on Amazon, Jay. It's at my website, which is carolmcleodministries.com. It's really wherever books are sold. Hey, Amen. Carol, you've always been a welcomed family member here at Cornerstone Television. Thank you. Thank you so much for your ministry, your words of wisdom, and for your book. And thanks for stopping by here on Unscripted Faith. I loved it. Bless you guys. Thanks for having me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, stay with us because when we return, we're going to have a brand new Spirit Walk segment with Tom as he takes us through the Book of Acts. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. With our thanks for your generous gift this month, request your 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar when you give in support of Cornerstone Television Network. Inside the calendar, you'll discover stunning photos of sites in the land of Israel that have been vital to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Plus, find encouragement through Scripture, reminding us of God's faithfulness in the midst of struggle. The 16-month Jewish Christian Victory Calendar features beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, room to track important dates, American and Jewish holidays, and a victory scripture for every month. Thank you in advance. Your partnership allows us to reach the lost through Christian television, provide our 24-7 prayer line, and support outreach to widows, orphans, and more. To request your calendar, call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Hey, I'm here down in downtown Manesson at the His Place Coffee Shop, one of my favorite places, having some coffee and just talking to you about what God wants us to know about our spirit walk. Now, right over my shoulder here is a flame, all right? That's a great visual of the flame and the power of the Holy Spirit. In fact, let me read it to you, okay? It says in the second chapter of Acts, in verse one, it says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a noise like a violent rushing wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributing themselves, and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, we talked last time about the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now, here is the reality of it. The Holy Spirit is descending upon them. Now, they all had tongues of fire appear on their heads. You know, this fire right here, it's a natural thing. It's something they're just burning off old gas that they can't, natural gas that they can't use. There's too many impurities in it. There's a little bit that would preach there as well. But I just want to say that the Spirit gives a supernatural power. One thing that I find so interesting is these guys were already filled with the, they were already received the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus, when he appeared to them, 
he, uh, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So what is this? Well, he said to wait, and they were waiting, and they were praising. And then suddenly, like a violent, powerful, rushing wind and fire, the Holy Spirit came upon them. And they were filled, they began speaking in tongues, they began praising God. I mean, what a scene it was, right? But why, why did he give us that? Because he wanted, as we said last time, for them to be witnesses. So those gifts were given to him, to all of us, to them and to us now, that we can be witnesses. So they went right out and they started to preach the gospel and they started to share the good news of God's love in all these different tongues and people were hearing it in their own language. Amazing things happening. And that's a, an important lesson for us, that God gives us the power. He fills us, He directs us, He gives us the power to fulfill whatever He's called us to do. What has He called you to do today? Whatever it is, He's going to give you that power. In fact, He's already given you that power if you receive the Holy Spirit. So, as it happens later in the book of Acts, He says, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? If you haven't, ask Him to fill you, and He will fill you, and He will direct you, and He will give you that power that you might go out and be his witnesses. Maybe it's just across the street. It might not be to the furthest reaches of the globe, but it might be just across the street that you might touch someone's life and you don't have to worry about what you're gonna say. You don't have to worry about where the power is gonna come from. The power comes from the Holy Spirit and that's the spirit walk that he wants for you today. Welcome back to Unscripted Faith here. And listen, we've been talking about living and thriving in a broken culture. Mm -hmm. You know, Tom's segment there uh, is so powerful because I think about the story of Peter and how he said, you know, Christ, I'll go with you all the way to the cross. I'll die. And, and Jesus said, listen, you're going to be cussing by the time <laughs> the, the cock crows three times. You are going to, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times before that whole situation happened. And how we can think we can do this on our own. We hear yeah. teaching like Carol just mentioned about being, having an attitude of gratitude and loving yes. unlovely people and things like that. But you really can't do it without the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Absolutely. How do you see the Holy Spirit impacting you to be salt and light in a dark generation? You know, Jay, it's interesting that you asked that question because I can remember being on a campus at Boston College. I was a freshman and I was getting very frustrated because I was like, how are these people, how can they not love people? Like, why are they not loving? And I remember being like angry and just like, oh, they just need to be kind. Well, it wasn't maybe a week from me beginning that questioning and really kind of taking it before the Lord that I suddenly found myself not able to love people. I mean, Jay, I've never gone through something like this. Mm -hmm. And it lasted for three months where I would go to, like where I would normally be like, hey, hey, hey. And I found myself being like, I don't want to even talk to you. Like I, and I would go in my quiet time and I was like, Lord, I recognize yeah. you who are love is the one who gives me the grace. And I think a lot of times as believers and just as people living in this God-given earth, we don't realize we operate under a grace that is heaven sent. That's right. You know, that grace to love people is only from the one who is love. Whether yeah. you're walking with God or not, if you have a little bit of love to give in your heart, it's come from him. That's right. So I think that's always where I try to stay really humble and really um, in recognition that I have nothing to give apart from Christ alone. And when I keep my mind and eyes centered on Jesus, then I'm able to give Jesus. That's right. What about you? Well, you know, I, I think one of the things that happens in this society is that First, we've got to admit, to your point, yep. we can't do it. And that's where that's Jesus had to bring Peter. Yes. If you remember the story, that's why he said, before I give you that Acts chapter yeah. 2 power, he first needed to realize he needed it. Yes. And so sometimes God has to put us in predicaments and situations where there's unlovely people. It can be in our spouse. Yes. It can be with our children. Yes. It can be wherever. It can be people in our church. Yes. And then we're like wondering, why are we struggling so much? Because we need the power of the Holy Ghost. And it's amazing that the church was never called the church until it got endued with power. So the okay. story with me is, um, I'll never forget, I was about... I don't know, maybe 18 years old, I can't remember, but I was younger and I had a job as a stock boy. Okay. And there was a lady that just was so mean to me. Mm. I mean, so mean. Now listen, those of y'all that are at home, 
where you sitting there with your halo crooked on your horns. Don't judge me from what I'm about to share with y'all. <laughs> Pastor Jay hadn't always been sanctified. And uh, there was a time where, I kid you not, she had so disrespected me in front of people that I grabbed a can. I remember what it was, a can oh, of pork shoot. and beans. Oh, and shoot. I've shared this story <laughs> several times. And, and I was going to go and hit her with it. This was years ago, years ago. I'm not a violent guy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm just being real with y'all. Just yes, being real with y'all in the yes. homes. Keep tuning in. It gets better. Yes. Uh, but uh, I, I had a can of pork beans and so she had left and I'm glad she did because yeah. I might've made a mistake uh, in that season of my life. And uh, so long story short, after that, I remember uh, the Lord told me, he said, do you want to win her? And I said, yeah, yeah I do. And, uh, and he said, this is what I want you to do. He goes, I want you to love her no matter what. Now, the thing that's Come important, on. Angela, when God gives you a command, to your point, he yes. gives you a grace. Yes, he does. So there's an empowerment if we yes. obey. Yes. And I went and I obeyed her. No matter what she did, she'd say, literally, hop into that trash can and clean it out. I did it. I hopped into dumpsters, oh, cleaned no, them out. No. I did whatever she asked me to do. God said, I want you to die to yourself, and I That's want it. you to go and love her. That's and it. I loved her all the way through mm. it to the point I ended up ministering to her. I ended up praying for her. She ended up apologizing to me on how she treated people. Come on. So how, and I overflowed in Come gratitude, in love, and in kindness. Come and no on. matter what she did, the grace of God that was on me yes. still kept flowing. And so a lot of times we don't understand that if we are just willing to obey God, he never gives you a command Come that on. he doesn't grace you to do. Come on, and that's the command that's always before us as that's believers right. is to love our neighbor as ourselves. And that neighbor might not agree with your political views and that Come neighbor on. might be cussing you out or telling you hop into a trash can. Yeah. But when you obey the command of the Lord as the first priority and have ears yeah. to hear that command, then goodness flows from that place and you reach people with the gospel. That's right. Jay, listen, honey, there have been many times I wanted a can of beans and, and rice or whatever yeah. was it. That, Pork and beans. <laughs> Pork and, and beans, beans. Yeah. that's what it was. <laughs> Shoot, I love that story. Yeah. And I really believe, you know, Jay, maybe in this last minute, just look in the camera and pray for our believe, the believers, the body, Amen. to really embrace the grace to love people in this difficult season. Amen, amen. Well, listen, if you're battling with that, just realize that God wants to help you and give you grace. So we just want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, whomever may be watching, Lord, give them a grace to love their spouse. There may be somebody watching right now that you even have a spouse that you're having a difficult time loving. The grace of God is coming upon you now. Maybe you have a wayward child. Father, we just pray right now that that grace and that anointing would come upon them, whether it's their boss, their coworker, no matter where they are, that they will walk in kindness and in love and that the overflow of joy and kindness and love would be upon you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, God's response to sin in this world, to ugliness, was to send his son who is love. Let us be those who walk in the love of Christ in this world to see it saved for Jesus. God bless Cornerstone you. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.